In today's tutorial, I'll be using Inkscape to demonstrate how to create a very simple paper airplane vector graphic similar to what you see here on my screen. So let's go ahead and get started. First things first in Inkscape, make sure you have view, custom set, and then go to zoom and you're going to zoom in at one to one. And then we'll open up the align and distribute menu uh, with this button right here. And then we'll open up the edit objects, colors, gradients, and stroke menu with that button right there. And from this drop down, make sure you have last selected chosen. And the first thing we'll do is we're going to create a square. So go ahead and click on the create squares and rectangles button and hold control and shift on the keyboard and click and drag on the canvas to create a perfect symmetrical square similar to what you see right there. And then we can go to the arrow and let's um, let's make this a very light shade of gray, maybe um, 10%. <clears throat> and then we can click on this a second time to get our rotation handles. And then while holding control on the keyboard, grab one of these corner handles and rotate this around until the corners are perfectly up and down like that. And then we'll go to the Edit Paths by Nodes tool. We'll turn that on. And in order to edit these nodes right here, we're going to go to Path, Object to Path. And that's going to give us four corners to manipulate. And then we're going to turn on our snap to cusp nodes right here. We'll click that button to turn that on. And we're going to click and drag over this bottom corner right there. And we're going to press delete on the keyboard to get rid of that. And then we'll take these two handles right here. Let's take this first handle and let's connect it back to that corner right there. And let's take this handle and connect it back to this corner right here. And then we can turn uh, the snap to cusp nodes off so that we have a triangle similar to what you see here. Now let's go back to our arrows, click on that. Let's bring this thing to the center of the page. And let's grab this side arrow right here. And let's bring this in a little bit. Make it a little taller maybe. About, about this size. As you can see on my screen, it's 300 wide, about 304 wide by 322 high. It doesn't have to be exactly that much, but somewhere in this general area will be pretty good. And then we can right click this and go to duplicate. And we're gonna come over here to the L column Make sure you have the HSL tabs uh, chosen. We'll come over to the L column. And we're going to make this a little bit darker. Slide this over to the left a little bit. And let's grab this top arrow and let's click and drag this down to about there. And what we could do is we can click on this bottom one next and then we can right click that and go to duplicate. And we'll make that one a lot darker. And let's uh, grab this side arrow. Let's bring this into about here. And then take this arrow and bring this into about here. And we want to size this thing up so it's about, I'd say about um, about this much thinner, kind of like that. And then we can hold shift on the keyboard and then click on the, the, uh, the very light gray triangle in the background. And we can center that up on the vertical axis. And then we can click off of the graphic to deselect everything. Now let's click on this gray, this dark gray uh, triangle we just created, and let's go to the Edit Paths by Nodes button. And let's click on that, and let's click and drag over these bottom two nodes so we have them both selected, and then hold Control on the keyboard, and let's click and drag these over to about here. We're gonna slide these over about that much. And then let's click on this, uh, this little triangle right there and grab this top node, hold Control, and then grab it and slide this over to about here. So we end up with something like that. And we'll go back to our arrow and click on that. And let's click and drag over this whole thing to select it all. And then click on it a second time to get the rotation handle. And let's, let's grab this, tops, uh, this top arrow right here that goes left and right. And let's grab that and slide this thing over to the right a little bit. About, um, about that much. And then we can hold control on the keyboard and grab this rotation handle. And we're gonna rotate this two steps. So we're gonna go one, Two, just like that. Then we can click off of that to deselect everything. Now let's go to our Bezier pen, and click on that, and let's turn our snap to cusp nodes back on. We're gonna use that again. And let's snap the cursor onto this corner node right here. And click, and then hold control on the keyboard and click and drag this down, straight down to about here. And then click, and then we can let go of the control button and let's snap this to this corner. Click that there and then connect this back at the starting point and snap it all together, kind of like that. And then what we could do is we're gonna draw another triangle. We're gonna start at this, we're gonna start at this bottom corner right here, snap the cursor onto there, click, and then come up here 
and turn off the snap to cusp nodes. We don't need that anymore. Then we could take this line and we could bring this up about to about here and then click that and then bring it into here and click there and finish it up going inside of this triangle. And let's make that a very dark gray. Kind of like that. A little bit darker than this gray right here. So maybe even we're going to go a little darker than that. That much is probably good. And then we could go to this, uh, the stroke paint button, the tab right there. And let's turn that off by clicking the X. And let's go back to the arrow and let's lower this to the bottom by selecting lower selection to the bottom. Click on that. And then let's click on this other triangle that we drew and then hold shift and click on this uh, thin triangle right there. And let's go to path union. We're going to unify them together. And then we can click off of the graphic to deselect everything. And then we can click and drag over this whole thing and we can group it together. And as you can see, we're pretty much finished. That is a very simple uh, tutorial if you're a beginner for Inkscape for how you can create a paper airplane. And you can even go ahead and change the color on this if you want. You can make this red, blue, whatever you'd like just by using different shades of the same color, similar to what I did with the grays and the whites here. So if you have any questions, let me know. And as always, thank you for watching.